Tom Duty, middle-aged American living in New Jersey near the Lincoln Tunnel. If you were to visit my website, you would type Howdy Duty into Google. You'll find the correct spelling of the famous puppet. You then combine Tom Duty in a Google search for my site from BBC days after the mass murder. King Supers, Boulder, Colorado. March 2021. A police officer, store manager, and a food shopper's They range in age from age 20 to 65. I wish I could stand here and promise the pain will heal quickly. Colorado Governor Jared Police said during a news conference on Tuesday, but I won't. At times like this, it's hard to see the light that shines through the darkness. Here's what we know about the victim so far. Bob Olds. Rika Olds, 25. Rika was living her dream. She was pursuing her dream of being a store manager at King Supers. Her uncle, Bob Olds, told reporters she was 25 years old. She didn't get to experience a lot of that stuff we had to experience in life, he continued. She had dreams, she had ambitions. Mr. Old said, he described her as the light of our family. Sharing how his niece was often seen supporting a new hair color. How she used to call him Uncle Bobob as a child how she would snort when she laughed. A supermarket colleague, Carly Lowe, said Miss Olds would dance to the music at the store and do anything to make you smile, make you laugh. According to her Facebook pro profile, Miss Olds went to high school in Lafayette, Colorado and attended the nearby Front Range Community College. Ricky baby, you were taken too soon. I miss you dearly. Her boyfriend Jordan Arthur posted on Facebook the day after her death. Kevin Mahoney, 61. Kevin Mahoney's death was confirmed on Twitter by his daughter, Erica. She said her father dialed while shopping at the local grocery store, which was five minutes from the house she grew up in. My dad represents all things love. I'm so thankful he could walk me down the aisle last summer, she wrote on Twitter with photos of her wedding. Miss Mahoney described her father to NPR as a dad to the entire neighborhood. Here in my hometown of Boulder, Presentational white space. She is now expecting a child and is devastated her father will never be able to meet his granddaughter. I think about my daughter and that my dad will never be able to hold her, she said. I will tell her that he had the biggest heart and that he was funny. He had this funny quirk where if you said a word and it was in a song, he would burst out in song. I know on some level he'll be there to meet her, Miss Mahoney said. Eric Talley, 51, Officer Talley, a father of seven children, joined the police force at age 40 after leaving a job in IT. The 10-year police veteran died charging into the line of fire to save people who were simply trying to live their lives and go food shopping, said Boulder Collar 
County District Attorney Michael Doherty. It was an emotional news conference. His fellow officers shared how when one of Officer Talley's children swallowed a coin, another was able to perform CPR after learning the technique from his dad. The child was given a lifesaver award from Boulder Collar Police Department a few weeks ago for his efforts. He didn't have to go in to policing. He had a profession before this. He felt a higher calling and he loved his community, said Boulder Police Chief Maris Harold. And he's everything that policing deserves and needs. He cared about his community. He cared about Boulder Police Department. He cared about his family and he was willing to die to protect others. In 2013, Eric made headlines in the Boulder Daily Camera newspaper after he and other officers waded out into knee-deep cold water to rescue the family of ducklings caught in a drainage ditch. He was looking for a job to keep himself off the front lines and was learning to be a drone operator, said his father, Homer Talley. President Joe Biden paid tribute to the fallen policeman, saying Officer Talley did not hesitate in his duty making the altered sacrifice in order to save lives. That's the definition of an American hero. Terry Liker, 51. Terry Liker had worked at the King Super's grocery store for 30 years. Her friend Lexi Kunson told Reuters. She loved going to work and enjoyed everything about being there, Ms. Kunson said, adding Ms. Liker was dating a colleague who survived the attack. Her boyfriend and her had been good friends and began dating in the fall of 2019. He was working yesterday too. He is alive. Ms. Kunson said Ms. Liker may have got her job through a program for people with special needs. Mr. Strong was the youngest of victims. Denny Strong, 20, a Facebook profile from Mr. Strong, said that he lived in Boulder, began working for the King Super's grocery store in December 2018. I can't stay home. I'm a grocery store worker, he wrote on Facebook profile picture. Mr. Strong described himself as a fan of planes, bikes, and motorcycles. On 8 March, he asked people to celebrate his birthday by donating to a pro-grun rights charity. He did nothing wrong to deserve this, and in no way at all, he made no choice that led to this, a friend wrote on a verified GoFundMe page to raise money for his family. He simply showed up to work and was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Tralona Bart Koyak, 49. Tralona, who was known to her friends as Lona, ran a clothing shop in Boulder called Umba Love. He put the fun and functional, the store wrote on Facebook, adding that the shop was founded by Miss Bart Koyak and her sister, Lisa Noble, after a trip to Bali. Fueled by their fashion for travel, music, and art, the two of them began selling clothing at music venue fest festivals and local fairs, and Uma came to be. Nevin Stanisic, 23. Mr. Stanisic worked as a repairman and had been called to the store to fix a broken coffee machine. The reverend at his family church told local media, his family came to the U.S. in 1990 to escape the violent conflict in Bosnia. 
They avoided one tragedy by coming here, but now this tragedy struck them, said Reverend Radovan Petrovic of St. John's of Baptist Serbian Orthodox Church in Lakewood, Colorado. We've known the family ever since we became their spiritual father and mother here, Reverend Petrovic's wife told the Denver Post. He was a very good, shy, hardworking boy. He's one of those kiddos who listened to his parents the best. Suzanne Fountain, 59. Miss Fountain worked in a live music venue in Boulder called E-Town Hall, according to the Washington Post. She was one of the kindest people I've ever known. Longtime friend Helen Foster, who owns the venue with her husband Nick, told the newspaper. Just in the way she dealt with people and in the way she was always fair and calm and reassuring, she just was a joy to be around. The venue confirmed the death toll of their house manager, writing on Facebook that she was a bright light to all she met. And we were proud to have her represent E-Town in our community as she welcomed people into our space hundreds and hundreds of times. This is an unfathomable loss for all of us and a painful reminder that a society can do much better job to prevent these acts of violence from becoming normalized in our culture. Lynn Murray, 62. Ms. Murray, a mother of two, was working to fill a grocery delivery service order when she died. Her husband, Jack McKenzie, told the New York Times that she had retired from working in New York as a magazine photo director and enjoyed helping people as an Instacart shopper. I just wanted her to be remembered as just this amazing, amazing comet spending 62 years flying across the sky, said Mr. McKenzie. Our tomorrows were forever filled with the sorrow, and that is unimaginable. Jody Waters, 65, Miss Waters, is remembered by her friends as a friendly boutique store owner who is a fixture in the Boulder retail fashion community. I know her from a store on Pearl Street where I shop, Colorado Street, Congresswoman Judy Amabile, Amabile told the Denver Post. She called Miss Waters just super energetic and nice and fun. This is published by BBC on 23rd March. Listeners, this is Tom Duty. I read it once and it was missing details on two of the deceased, two of the murder victims. So I waited till it got updated. And it appears that's what happened yesterday on the 23rd of March. Today's the 24th of March. This has been Tom Duty, middle-aged American living in New Jersey near the Lincoln Tunnel. If you were to visit my website, you would type Howdy Duty into Google. You'll find the correct spelling of the famous puppet. You then combine Tom Duty in a Google search for my site. Thank you for listening. Have a good day. Good evening. A restful night's sleep. Ciao. It's to reader's note. I'm at El Queretero. It's a Colombian cafe in Union City, New Jersey, on 48th Street in Bergen Line. The acoustics here are not great. However, I chose to do this in public. It's a good space for me emotionally. And and I think it also captures the world that our, our life has to, captures the sentiment that our life has to, has to, has to move on. Ciao. Tom Duty, middle-aged.